If you remember back a few lessons, we went over the quickening of the elect. And because of predestination, these chosen few were chosen arbitrarily by God before the foundation of the world. Now we'll go into what the word foundation in Thayer's lexicon actually means in another lesson. There are obviously some out there who either don't understand how to read it or just are trying to mislead people. Well, that being said, what, what are we called to? 1 Thessalonians 4 and 7 says, For God hath not called us unto uncleanness, but unto holiness, right? If we're called to be holy, then we obviously are unholy or we're not good. Didn't Jesus say that there is none good in Matthew 19 and 17? Let's read that. And he said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one, that is God. But if thou wilt enter into life, keep the commandments. This is what God says in Ezekiel 36 and 26. A new heart also will I give you, and a new spirit will I put within you. And I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh, and I will give you an heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes, and you shall keep my judgments and do them. When he puts his spirit in us, what is that? The last part of 1 John 5 and 6 says, And it is the spirit that beareth witness, because the spirit is truth. Well, John 17, 17 says, Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. So by his word, his truth, he sanctifies us. And how do we know if he has done that? 1 John 4.13 says, Hereby know we that we dwell in him and he in us, because he hath given us of his spirit. He has given us of his, his predestinated elect the ability to understand his truth. Where do you get that? Proverbs 20 and 12 says that the hearing ear and the seeing eye, the Lord hath made even both of them. And in Isaiah 6 and 9, the Lord says, Go and tell this people, Hear ye indeed, but understand not. And see ye indeed, but perceive not. He puts the hearing ear and seeing eye in his people to be conformed to his image because of our depravity, which is what predestination is all about anyway. Now the natural man, or people that believe and accept Christ, don't and can't see this according to what we just read in the scriptures, right? But why would Jesus do this? Let's turn to Matthew 15 and 24 and find out. But he answered and said, I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. His sheep wander all over the place because they haven't been fed what sheep are supposed to be eat. They know that there's something wrong with these churches but can't put their finger on it. They go from one church to another searching. 1 Peter, the second chapter, says they need, as newborn babes, and desire the sincere milk of the word that they may grow. Sheep have to have real, the real word of God. They know there's something wrong with this accept Christ garbage. It just doesn't make sense to them. Jesus never said, come accept me as your personal savior, did he? Now, in Ephesians 2 and 8, the scripture reads, for by grace are ye saved, through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus, unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. And that doesn't mean walking down an aisle and accept Christ. That's a work that men boast of, isn't it? I got saved. That is not the good works that we just read. In what way are we being made holy by that? What about Christ working in us unto good works that we are to walk in? Well, what's that talking about? Let's turn over to 2 Corinthians 5 and 17 and read. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are made new. And all things are of God, who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ, and hath given to us the ministry of reconciliation. 
Well, what is that talking about? The word in the Greek for reconciliation is katalage. It means in the New Testament of the restoration of the favor of God to sinners that repent and put their trust in the expiatory death or death of Christ on the cross. We are ministers for Christ in that we carry our daily cross and deny ourselves daily according to Luke 9.23. The word for minister in this verse is diakonos. It means those in the service of preparing and presenting food. We minister daily about predestination, election, and the sovereignty of God, telling people about the holidays being heathen or pagan, and how the Bible says not to do them just for starters. We deny ourselves daily, which leads us right into Ephesians, the fourth chapter. And let's read verse 22. That ye put off the concerning the former conversation, the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lusts, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that ye put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Let's turn over to a sister passage of this and go a little bit deeper. Now, also a few lessons back, we talked about the new birth, which is the quickening, and how God did that to us with Christ while we were yet in our sins, right? Uh, let's go to uh, Colossians 3 and start in verse 1. If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affection on things above, not on things of the earth. For ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall ye also appear with him in glory. Mortify, therefore, your members which are upon the earth, fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil concupiscence and covetousness, which is idolatry. For which things sake the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience, in the which ye also walked sometimes when ye lived in them. But now ye also put off all these, anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communication out of your mouth. Lie not one to another, seeing that ye have put off the old man with his deeds, and have put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. Put on, therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, bowels of mercy, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long-suffering, forbearing one another and forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. Above all these things, put on charity, which is the bond of perfectness. The word charity in the Greek is the word agape. And in 2 John 6, it says, And this is love, that we walk after his commandments. God births us by his word. This is the quickening, which is the Greek word, zuapoieo. And this means to bring to life. Yet we read, just read in verse 3 that we are dead. We are starting to be dead to sin. We put on the new man, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory, according to Colossians 1 and 27. This is exactly what John the Baptist meant in John 3 and 30. He must increase and I must decrease. We deny ourselves and take up our cross daily. We die just a little more, hopefully each day that we may, he may increase and consume us until there is nothing of self left. But that doesn't come overnight. It takes a lifetime of fiery trials for this flesh to die off, and it does not die easily. At the same time, the new man of Christ and his righteousness is taking over this vessel. You start to acquire the knowledge of Christ and his kingdom. How do you expect to get there if you don't have the right garments for the wedding on? Let's look at Matthew 22 and 11. And when the king came in to see the guests, he saw there a man which had not on a wedding garment. And he saith unto him, Friend, how camest thou in hither not having a wedding garment? And he was speechless. 
Then said the king to the servants, Bind him hand and foot, and take him away, and cast him into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are called, but few are chosen. Ask yourself this one question when you get to the judgment. What garments are you going to be wearing?